Hey everyone, back on one of my local streams. We had a heap of rain in this part of the state in the last week, so the rivers have come up, but I'm thinking and I'm hoping that the, uh, the fishing is gonna be pretty good because of that. So what I've brought with me for this afternoon, I've got my 11 foot three weight nymphing rod here. Uh, I'm rigged up with nymphing line. I've got one of my nymphing leaders on here. Then for tippet, I'm just running with straight 7X SA Absolute Fluorocarbon. And then I'm fishing a dry and an inch to start. So I've got hotspot pheasant tail there on the point, And I've got a cream split wing mayfly there on the top. These rivers down here have a lot of big cream mayfly and the fish love to come and roll over the top and eat the dry. So um, the good thing about this setup, even though it's a uro-nymphing setup, I can fish a dry and a nymph, I can fish a single nymph, I can fish two nymphs. It's quite versatile on this size river. All right, I'm gonna position myself side on. Oh wow, look at some of the big insects around. Position myself side on just so I can get some nice straight drifts coming down this water here. Water's not overly deep, so I don't need to go for super long, super greedy drifts because I'm gonna get to the water anyway when I get up there. It's like there's no water. Oh, I just saw a nice rise further upstream there. Gotcha. Hey, it's a nice way to start. Nice little wild brown. As I was talking then, I actually just saw a fish rise way up the top of this piece. Here we go. Such a good simple fly. Hot spot pheasant tail. And this is actually one of the ones out of the pack. Um, out of my custom fly range which you can buy at flylife.com.au so this is literally fresh out of one of the packs that I had for guiding I am thinking that this dry is going to get monstered at some point this water where I'm casting now very much the there's one on the dry <laughs> I was about to say this water is the spot where it's going to get eaten, the nymph's going to get eaten because it's nice and deep there, but you are happy to launch and eat that. Thank you, buddy. Interesting. In the last month, I haven't really been catching the fish of that size in this river, so I wonder if the rains kind of brought them all out and really freshened everything up. The hard thing for me here, as I'm just drying this dry out, the hard thing is the water on the left here, I would really ideally like to fish with a heavier nymph than I would fish the water up on the right. So I'm gonna kind of be compromised. I could spend ages and ages changing flies going from shallow deep, shallow deep, but you know, for a recreational day of fishing, you're pretty much going to have to kind of sacrifice one piece of water. So I think for now, I'm going to keep the flies I've got on, which are ideal for this seam here through the mid. And then when I fish this stuff on the right, I'm going to, uh, I'm just going to have to shorten up the drifts because otherwise the longer the drift goes, you know, the more likely it is to fall onto the bottom and hook the bottom. So, use that's a nice little pocket there. Start working our way up. Often in scenarios like this, I would fish the whole way up the edge, the shallow edge. Oh, that's a nice fish. What a lovely dry fly take that was. Oh. Oh. Beautiful fish, beautiful take. <laughs> uh, what I often do in water like this is if there weren't blackberries on the edge, I would, thank you buddy, I would sneak along this edge, fish a single dry up this edge, then come back around and fish up the middle. But because of the blackberries and there's the dry in the mouth, Pop you, ooh, pop you out. Barbless hooks are so good 
don't need forceps, you don't need anything, the flies just essentially fall out. Yeah, so, you know, on a larger river, say, I don't know, like high country streams where there's more room around the edges, sneak up, fish a single fly up the edge. Then if you wanted to fish the deeper stuff, you can come back and then fish a different rig up through that water. But on these smaller streams, you kind of don't have that luxury because you're kind of in the river and you're stuck in the river. You can probably see why I love fishing Nymph Under Dry on my Euronymphing setup so much because you get almost, you get the best of both worlds. You get the dry fly eats and you get the Nymph eats in the deeper water. drifts up shallow. It's, it's nice and that sun may even be able to see one if there is one sitting particularly shallow up in here. I reckon I can see one there. Oh! I'm not sure if I'm looking at a bit of a Blackberry branch or a trout. No, I don't think that is a fish. My mind playing tricks on me. Another feisty guy. Come on, buddy. Really cool seeing the health of the stream. Seeing so many. Come on. Just tangled in the tippet. So many healthy fish here. Whoop. Thank you, mate. I'm pretty happy with my decision, I think, to go with this size 16 2.8 mil pheasant tail means I can fish this water over here really well and then when I fish up on this edge just make some short drifts and do the best I can Be interesting to see if they're in this. Finding these Otway streams, they're not always, they don't love, like even when the, the water's really high, they often don't sit full in the main current. They may today, but because the water so often is quite low here, the fish seems so comfortable and at home sitting up shallow. So it's like, regardless of what the, uh, it's a bad cast. Regardless of what the uh, the height of the water is, it's like they s often seem to still want to be sitting in that shin deep, knee deep stuff, which is really fun water to fish. Oh, I can see one here. That's a very annoying position to fish to. It's just there. 
because I'm going to be quite cramped. Try and get it to eat the dry. Yeah, like that. <laughs> uh, that was amazing. Thank you, buddy. You just proved my point about where you fish like to sit on this river. And he's pinged off, and that's okay. <laughs> so shallow, it's just sitting right there on the edge. So important with fish like that to not let your drift go too long if you're fishing a nymph under dry to a fish that shallow the risk you're going to run is if you throw a nymph in a dry there and you lead it by too long or you let the drift go too long or your nymph's too heavy for the depth of water so often what happens i see it a lot is that uh you know the nymph will hook the bottom then the dry will drag and the fish will kind of freak out and go yeah i don't like that so i find if you see a fish like that get it to them you can normally fall short all day long um especially if like conditions like this which are quite forgiving because the water's high you can get close to them they're not super spooky but you'll find that a lot of the time if you fall short you get multiple shots at them but then you when you do get the cast right you don't want to lead them by too much because the longer the drift goes the more risk there is that it'll drag something will go wrong nymph will hook the bottom hook a stick, anything like that. Nice piece. Oh, what a beautiful take that was. <laughs> this is nuts. So good. Come on. Thank you, mate. What a beautiful trout. They're loving the dry. Absolutely loving it. You ate that really well, buddy. Come on, open that mouth. Again, barbless hooks fall out so well. The tippet's more tangly than the hook. <laughs> you know you've got the right dry and the right presentation when the fish are eating it so well and get it so down like that. It is fun watching those nice, splashy, aggressive takes, but often they're not the best ones to convert into a fish landed because, yeah, the fish are kind of launching at it rather than really confidently sipping it. probably wondering what I'm doing when I'm drying my fly. I'm just using, it's connected to my uh, my pack. I'm using this Orvis fly dip, dropping the dry into it, <laughs> giving it a blow and then just false casting it. And it actually dries out the dry beautifully. And it's so much quicker than the old way I used to do. I actually wrote a review on it in the fly life issue that came out this week. You can see there, and the dries up floating beautifully again. Go on, yeah. That was just the best eye, the best piece of water for a trout. Oh. There we go. How good is this fishing? We are so, so lucky to have such great wild brown trout fishing down here. There we go. <laughs> this eye where that fish came from definitely the best spot when you look up at this piece you've got fast flowing water on there you've got kind of a bit of a sticky mess there way up the top you can see there's like a rock that breaks the current it creates this beautiful soft seam coming the whole way down there between essentially myself and that tree fern and that's where that last fish was like 
in the beautiful soft slacker bit where it can move to the faster water either side if it wants to. Nice short drifts when I'm fishing it up on that edge there. So whilst I'm fishing, I got a really good question in the YouTube comments the other day, which is how long do you want to be casting when fishing a nymphing setup like this? And the answer is it's totally up to you. Oh, that's a great brown. Oh, no way. In that seam again. Um, the answer is it's totally up to you. But as you can see, it's dictated by the conditions. When the water's high, there's a little bit of color like this, you can get close to the fish. You wanna fish as short as you possibly can, because then you're gonna miss far less and convert far more, land more of the ones that eat your fly. Oh, what a take. But if this water is, gets low, like it does, you look like a very old fish, mate. What a lovely take. There's the fly, beautiful trout. When the water gets quite low, you know, I'll be casting this rig double the length that I'm doing now because you don't have the luxury of fishing short. So yeah, hopefully that answers that one. It is a, it's a tricky one because my philosophy and answer was typically you want to fish always as short as you possibly can because then there's, you know, less variability in the slack in your rig, wind, all the external factors how quickly the fish eats the fly, et cetera, et cetera. So you have more control the closer you fish to yourself. That is amazing. So many fish in this river, and I should point out, it doesn't always fish like this. This is pretty ridiculous. Um, but it does show the potential and the number of fish in these streams. They just obviously are so comfortable and happy this time of the year to have a bit of extra water in the river. And they're just taking the opportunity to feed well. And like I said, they're just so not spooky right now. Very happy to be fishing, what's that? A rod length and a half of line on top of my 11 foot rod. And it's no problem at all. Whereas normally on this river, you need to fish a lot further than that. Oh, dang. Should be one up there. Yeah. Oh, they're just sitting in that exact line I was telling you about before. Not in the fast current either side, they're all in that nice slack middle. Ooh. Come on, buddy.
There's the fly again out of that fly dip. Give it that false cast. Make sure those fibers have separated nicely. That is the key. There we go. All right, we're gonna get out of this run. There's a lot of fish here, it's been a lot of fun, but I'm sure you could probably stay and keep chipping away at them. So I'll just power up this edge to the top of this eye and this seam. I wonder if there's gonna be one on this edge. Yep, got him. Oh no, looked at the dry, turned, and then ate the nymph. I saw a little bit of my line go. That was not ideal. Such a beautiful stream. You can see how it has that chalky color I was talking about. Like it's not, when you get a bit of rain in this, this part of the state, the rivers go dirty, but then when they're kind of clearing, they get this kind of bluey, it's almost like a glacially type chalky colour. Make a few drifts through the middle, I reckon. Just feels too fast over there. All right, we're gonna push on up. All right, I'm just coming around this tree after that amazing first run, like that was seriously incredible. It, uh, it rarely happens like that, that you jump in somewhere and you just go bang, bang, bang straight away. Um, but I thought great opportunity to let you guys know that if you did want to learn some stuff, you wanted some coaching, tuition, I do offer guiding so you can head to my website, tomjarmanfishing.com, check that stuff out. You can book me for a day there. And also don't forget that the gear that I'm using, my Orvis nymphing rod here, SA nymphing line, all the tippets, all of that stuff, um, yeah, weight is everything. You can get all that stuff in Australia. So check the description below. Check, uh, check out what gear I'm using and where you can get it as well. So yeah, we'll jump back into this run. All right, so I've just walked up here past that tree from that first run. And I'm thinking the fish are gonna be in this softer edge here in that shallower water, like I was saying. So I am just gonna drop down the uh, size of my fly, sorry, the weight of my fly, I should say, just because I want to fish a slightly lighter fly because the water's a little bit slower, it's a bit shallower and I just don't want to be hooking the bottom too much. So 2.5 millimeter beaded hotspot pheasant tail there. It's the only change I'll make. But what I can say, and I'm pretty confident in saying, this run will be nowhere near as good as what I just fished, this little piece of water because that last piece was crazy. So, so good. But uh, hopefully I can pick off a couple in here. All right. Perfecto. See what we can do. A little bit shallower, so um, and slower, so I may have to fish a little bit further away from myself at times. I'm pinning myself right to this edge. Gives me the best angle to see if there are any sitting there. Oh my god, is that one there? <laughs> sitting um, in front of me. 
Oh, like that, no way. Oh, how did that fish not stick and he's still sitting there? <laughs> that was crazy. Um, yeah, pinning yourself to this edge gives you the best visibility. Just gives me the best angle and it means when I do come across a fish in front of me, I'm not too, like, I can give myself a little bit of angle. Why did that fish not stick? Give myself a bit of angle to make a better presentation. I don't like fishing straight upstream at them because I find I get quite cramped. I can't see that guy now. There's a different fish though. <laughs> Move out into the river so I don't get my rod tips struck in the trees. Thank you, mate. You are about a third of the size of that fish that I just missed, but that's okay. I'd love to see another one, just sneak up here, see a brown on the edge, which I've just done. There's one sitting in front of this flat rock. Oop, make sure this camera angle's right for you. Not a massive fish, but just, oh, it just rose there. Oh, it just swam down because it looked like it missed whatever it ate the first time or tried to eat gonna open myself up no I probably won't I might just cast straight at it because I'm under these trees here so I can't do much all right see if this one eats it Ooh, that was not good and it spooked I did exactly what I was saying to everyone, well, you all earlier, that you shouldn't do, which is cast too far above it, because my nymph hooked on the bottom, but my rod was probably a fraction long for that, the position of that fish. I almost need to step back a little. That really sucks. All right. Gotcha. Different one. That makes me feel better about stuffing up that last one. Thank you, mate. Hey, so nice. Such nice fish. They have such cool, like, you know, silvery, almost dark colors in here too. Because the rocks, even when this place is crystal clear, the rocks are still quite dark in here and they just blend in so well. Oh, I'm so annoyed about that fish. few fish on this seam like you can see the little bubble line coming down it comes out from that deep spot over on the top left cuts kind of diagonally across and that's where these last couple have been Wings fallen a little bit flat. Oh, okay, there we go. There's a nice fish for us. On the bottom there, you can see straight up to that kind of mossy rock. Make sure the camera gets this. I'm gonna move across so I can fish at this one properly. So I reckon it will eat the dry. It's a nice fish. In line with myself and that dead stick that's sticking up from the water. Probably gonna ruin a few of the fish here. I'm very happy to for that one. No, I've lost it. No, there it is. Ah, here we go. Make sure I can line him up right. 
Oh, as I made that cast, it ducked to the left and ate something off the bottom, which was lucky because my dryer wasn't riding particularly well. It's got a very wet ring there. what's actually happened to my dry because quite a lot of fish have eaten it they pulled CDC out of one side so it wasn't riding overly straight for me just trim back my cipher a little bit oh great fish he's still there ah oh, I just rose again all right here we go got you oh what a lovely take. Oh. Great fish. Glad I fixed that dry up because it was riding weirdly because oh, quite a few fish had eaten it. Every time I cast it, it was laying on its side and it just didn't look right. So what I did, I just pulled a little bit of CDC, a bit of material out of either side of it. So the fly sat up and rode correctly. And then, ah, chill out. This guy absolutely woofed it. Lovely, so good. <laughs> Seeing how it's been fishing, it kind of makes you think I could have I could have just fished, picked up a dry fly rod and dry fly fished all of this, but you know, sometimes after rain, the fishing is really good, but they won't touch a dry. This goes for everywhere. And other times it, they just kind of eat everything. So this is luckily one of those afternoons when they're just happy kind of eating a bit of everything. Did actually enjoy fishing from this side so i'm gonna stand in this fast current because i think there'll be another one up towards that mossy rock sort of area pop the polaroids back on So you make sure my back cast has to go horizontal to the water, otherwise I'm going to get that tree every time. Also so important that when I do strike, the strike is straight downstream. So if I go up, it's going straight up into that tree. Come on, one of these got to be up there. It's too good. The risk I'm making is that I'm maybe kind of walking on top of these fish on the seam of this fast current here. But that's okay. I don't think we're in a trout shortage right now. Oh, it's in reverse. I reckon I can see one sitting just on the lip there in front of that grass. I don't know if it's a fish or not. 
I reckon it is. I have to get the angle to it right. That should be better. Maybe it's just a, a fishy looking rock because it did not move once. Ah, uh, it is a rock. I'm looking at the shadow under the lip of a rock there. It's a little bit annoying. My fly's a bit light for this little bit here, but I might ping a bow and arrow up into the top corner. And then we'll literally into the top corner of the blackberries. Because there may be one on that far side. Again, hook that blackberry so bad. Well, there you go. Completely stuck that. Let's wander up. Don't think they're going to be in this really fast, rapidy stuff. Because why would they bother expending that energy and that stuff? Maybe one tight to the bank up there. I'm just checking to make sure there's not one up in there. Looks really nice for one up in there. may be the last little piece I fish. Got some flat water there, a little shallow drop in the side of this log. Then I'll leave you guys there and I might uh, continue on myself. Surely there's someone. It's gotta be home over there. Can't see one. It'd stand out really well too if it was in there. Maybe up in there. Really? Isn't that amazing? The parts there are just fish everywhere. And there's not a fish in that beautiful soft scene behind the log. Well, there's not a fish right now for me to catch, I guess. That's what I should say. Should be up there. That's the spot. Really? I've left my 2.5 mil pheasant tail on because I felt like they're just eating the dry anyway so my nymph is just a a way of getting the 
getting the dry to them at the moment, but made me think maybe I do want a slightly heavier fly to punch down into that if they're not gonna if they're not gonna come up and eat the dry fly for me. It's actually really good, me not catching them in here. Oh, except that one that's just come off. <laughs> because it does show you that it's not always like, bang, 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 fish, fish. Like, it's not always like that. But, I mean, that last fish ate the nymph and didn't stick, didn't eat it very well. And it's got a burr on the end of the, the barbel's hook. Might change that. Oh, just saw one rise in that run above. So maybe, if I've got battery life on the GoPro, I do. Make a few more drifts through here. And then we'll jump up into that run above, make another few drifts there and leave it there. Cause this has been such good fishing. Still feel like, should be another fish in this somewhere. Don't need to be heaps of them. Just another one would be nice. Yeah, oh, that came off as well. That's so bizarre. They've both been right on that lip. Right where it drops off the shelf. That's so, so annoying. But I was lucky early where I didn't have any come off, you know, really early in the first couple of runs, well, the first run in particular that I fished. So probably I was due. Oh, how about that one? Just eating the dry and the riffle. <laughs> I reckon I was due losing those last couple. Thank you, mate. Oh. All right, we can leave this, <laughs> leave this fishless run and head up to this lovely bit where I saw that one rise before. Catch a couple up there. And then maybe home time actually. Alright, a few more, just a couple, I said I was going to leave, but because that fish ate there, I have to make another drift, just for my own sanity. God, that water looks beautiful in that sunlight, that like blue, slightly chalky look. 
looked incredible. I would have thought they would be stacked in there, but not to be, clearly. Could be up in that little drop in. Very risk, at risk of hooking a stick in that little bit. All right. Few casts up in this stuff. They're gonna be somewhere. I know there's a fish up in that bubbly depression up there. I did see one rise, but surely I'll see one sitting up in here. All right, just added a little bit more weight. Just because, a bit of depth there, and whenever there's upwelling, like where the current, didn't even make a cast and I hooked a stick. Uh, where there's like upwelling, where it wafts kind of up, I like to have a little bit of extra weight to kind of combat that. Make a few short ones through the tail. Might be one over there, but I'm going to leave that. Oh, it looks beautiful up, up in that. Check that out. Oh, missed it, I reckon. Come on. No way. I saw that fish eat. And it like got rid of it before I had the chance to do anything. Gosh, I can't believe. I cannot believe that. Oh, I reckon I might jump over to the other side of the river because I reckon I'll be able to see them up on the shallow shelf and see this current's kind of pulling the flies towards me very awkwardly. Kind of misread that, I reckon. Feels much better on this side. Those fish that I missed were just there. I'm just making sure I can't see one sitting up really shallow. Oh, I recast before that stick as a little one was coming up to eat the dry.
Interesting. And those fish did not eat anywhere near as well as the ones in the other water I fished earlier. There's one. Oh. I wonder why you stuck and the others didn't. It's a nice one. Stay out of those sticks. Nice fish. Such cool colours on them. Thank you, mate. Interesting, that fish came from not nothing water, but quite kind of slack stuff over there. Thought I saw a rise out of the corner of my eye. I looked back and my dry was gone, which is terrible. Be interested to see if they're in the middle of this. The trend has been super the fast, unpredictable water hasn't been as good as kind of the eyes. That's a bit more in the eye there. Or maybe they're going to be, you know, further across on the other side. Don't fall out there. Jeez, that's <laughs> got sucked into the reverse. Come on, one more fish run. One more trout for Tom. There's a serious amount of upwelling up in the mid here. Wow, that's a funky drift. That's, this stuff up here is almost ceasing to be nymph under dry water oh, and leaning towards being dedicated nymphing water just because the current's so complicated and if you've got your dry and your nymph and they're going to be working against each other like that, it's not super pleasant. Interesting, so interesting. All right, I wasn't gonna do it, but we're gonna fish one more piece. I don't know whether I should put on, I'm going to put on two nymphs maybe, why not? Just to fish that inside swirly bit there, means I can actually flick them in here.
is the beauty of this setup is that it transitions to two nymphs or a single nymph so easily. Wax on my indicator. You might jump over here, fish back into that. Before I walk through, I want to swing these two nymphs back through where I missed those fish, just in case. They don't normally eat the swing here because it's so clear. You can never really get above them. It's so low and clear normally. You can never get above them to catch them on it. But I thought maybe, maybe not. Ah, <laughs> oh, they bugged me how I missed the two here early. That's really weird. It does feel too swirly. Such a weird current. Why would you be there when you could be down in the back somewhere? Or you could be sitting shallow on the inside coming up here. Which I'm sure there's gonna be one. little back piece there. I always <laughs> fish for longer than I plan. I wasn't going to go this far on the river just now. Nice stick fish. Managed to tangle my dropper. Probably just here. Perfect spot. Gotcha. Had to be. Come on, mate. Calm down, buddy. Nice fish. Yeah, they're not liking the overly complicated stuff. Quite a hard angle to cast on because of these trees. That's a good drift. I reckon I can see one. Down there, maybe I need a little bit more weight on my point fly just because this current is just a complete mess.
just up my bead weight there just because this angle is quite peculiar just want a bit more contact for my flies in that swirly water There we go, come on, this seam. Hmm. Look at this, no way. There's a fish cruising in the back. He's about to cruise out up under this branch. There, he's coming towards me. Oh, no way. That was so weird. That was so weird. That fish was like swimming at me and I had to drop the flies at him. And I saw his mouth open, I had to hit him, but I don't think it had them. So I'm just gonna throw a couple more last drifts down this edge. Gotcha. Different fish. Oh. I'm very surprised I only got the one here. I really thought there'd be more, but could be the old classic they're just not in the deep water on this river. Because they don't seem to like it. Thank you, mate. All right, couple more casts on this little bit here, and then we're done. For reals this time. <laughs> Oh, 
No. Can't believe that last one there came, didn't stick. So that's what you get. All right, well, nice stick fish on the bottom to finish up there. <laughs> well, all wrapped up there. That was really fun. Um, I fished this stretch here, literally just this straight. You can see to the bottom um, where the light's hitting down, there's where I started. I kind of fished three and this little run, three to four kind of little pieces of water, and it was really good. Very ironic because the last time I did a video like this was last summer on the Kiwa River where the exact opposite thing happened where I didn't really catch that many to start and then at the end I found like a run which had a lot of fish in it. Today was the exact opposite. I jumped in, started and they were everywhere and then the further I came up it went back to more what I would expect on a normal day's fishing where every good spot had a fish or two. So um, yeah, that was quite funny. I was kind of chuckling the whole time I was fishing because I thought it's not going to stay this good for this long because it's just not how it, how it normally happens. Um, so yeah, don't forget, as always, uh, links, descriptions of the gear that I'm using. You can check that out below. Um, below this video, there'll be like a little text box. You kind of click more, drop down. I know a few people have been struggling with that. So check that out there. You can also find links to my website if you're interested in guiding, coaching, attending any clinics. Um, you can get in touch with me via my website there. And uh, also don't forget all the flies that I'm using, uh, you can buy those at flylife.com.au. They're in my TJF signature fly range. So check those out as well. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed that one and I'll see you next video.